Tragic here, and welcome to the next one in the series. This is the third and the final quest in the Casa Doom box, and it's one of the most unique quests in the game, period. And you'll see that in a while. Uh, you might have noticed, actually, that <laughs> I'm, uh, I had all the cards on the table, and that's because I actually finished this quest on, like, turn three. I had it recorded and everything. I'll upload it if you guys like. It's actually pretty interesting, cause it, but it's just a really fluky win like in the first couple of turns and I've actually never seen that happen before on this particular quest but anyway this quest is interesting because basically we're lost inside a maze now the way that's simulated in the game is is that we have this large quest deck it's like seven or so cards and we're constantly shuffling it and cards are being put into it and pulled out and you're changing its order and all this kind of stuff and one of those cards out of the seven is the exit. Now you could draw the exit on turn one, or you could draw it never. So when you're building a deck for this quest, you wanna find a deck that can function for long periods of time. That means you need recursion, you need Dwarven Tombs, you need at least one copy of Will in the West so you can recycle all your threat reduction. And without threat reduction, there's a real problem that you're just gonna run out of steam or go over threat because sometimes you'll find that you'll just keep playing and playing and playing and just never, never find the exit card. And other times, like in the last game, you'll find it so quickly, you'll just go, oh, well, that was a letdown. So it's a bit of a random quest, but uh, it has a lot of very interesting facets. And one of the interesting facets is the Nameless Sphere, who's basically the Balrog. But we're not fighting the Balrog. You do actually fight the Balrog right at the end of the Daredevil cycle. But this is sort of, he's just like this presence and his attack and threat values are based upon your victory display, how many victory points you have. So things are constantly put into the victory pile and it increases the difficulty. And you know, it's a very interesting, got great dynamics this quest. Like the longer you play, the more hardcore and closer the presence of the Balrog comes. It's, you know, pretty awesome. One of the problems this quest does have though, is it has a number of the cards that sort of gave this game a bad reputation for among gamers for a while. And that is there's a couple of cards that are uncancelable, like you can't do any, like even if you put all the thought you want in your deck building, it's just completely random. You just flip the card over and it will completely decimate you. And there's a couple of cards like that in this quest. And one of them will, basically kill it usually kills your hero and there's nothing you can do about it and there's other cards like that as well i think it's called cave in or something but the, even so especially in a solo player game there's so few of these there's like only one in the entire deck so it's not usually a problem but still that is why we've got gloin here gloin goes here he, he gets money through taking wounds and we have the large plate armor attachments which gives you plus four wounds so he can get to he starts with four you can have two wounds on him two armors on him that gets him another eight and then there's even two extra uh, little plus health uh, attachments that goes on to him so we can get up to like 14 health which can usually absorb even a hit from the balrog you know but even if we don't have that problem we have Frodo, who can absorb damage through threat gain. Of course, we've got Boromir, and Boromir's bigger thing is that he can just put your threat up by one to attack. So as you can see, there's already lots of threat going on in our hero list, and that is why we have so much threat reduction. We've got Gandalf, we've got uh, sneak attacks, we've got Dwarven Tunes, we've got Gladwell's Greetings. I mean, we're just absolutely to the brim with threat reduction, and we've also got Will of the West to recycle all our threat reduction cards because that's one thing this game, this quest requires is the ability to play for long periods of time if you don't find the exit. For our resourcing, we actually have quite a large problem with resourcing in this deck. Basically, if you're gonna run Gloin for resource gen, and we're also running Steward and we have resources coming out of ears in this quest, but you'll see why. if you know hopefully we'll see, you'll see why but we're running the belt the dwarven belt which i can't pronounce the first name of which allows us to basically cast anything so the idea is it doesn't matter how many resources are on gloin they're always utilizable 
Now, the resources on Boromir are kind of wasted. You know, they often stack up, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, there are cards in here, like for example, we have one copy of Haldor Lorien, we have one copy of Radagast, and we have one copy of Gildor. And the reason why we have one copy of each is because we don't really need to draw any of them. There's no reason why we want Haldar over the other ones. So I treat them all the, all three of those as a single card. But if we do draw two of them, we can actually cast both of them onto the table. Their uniqueness won't matter. And that's the kind of thing you can get away with when you have a high resource engine running the belt. Now the problem is, the biggest problem this deck has is that all the healing spells at this time are inside lore. So we need to get the belt before we can put out our Wardening of Healing. And the way the Wardening of Healing works is you can spend two resources to untap him and then tap him to heal again. And what you'll find is that you'll just, once once Gloin gets like all his armor on, you just don't even need to defend, you know, like, oh, the troll's going to hit you for 10. Who cares? We've got like 14. So bang, we just get hit for, you know, 10. And that gives him 10 resources, which gives him, which gives the Warden of Healing the ability to heal six, because he heals one in the tap, and then he has five untaps, which will heal another five. So you just right back down to zero damage, basically, by the end of it. So that's, that's the, basically the way the deck is supposed to function. But still, not having the uh, a natural law resource is the biggest hiccup. Look, if you don't draw that belt, it can get kind of sticky. Well, I guess that's about enough of that. Uh, let's get into the game. Just one more thing. This is the first one I've played, or says first video I've done since I've gotten the new mic. So there's going to be some teething problems. I have to work out how it works, you know, the kind of levels I need. You know, am I recording it too softly? Or am I recording too loud? Uh, the best ways to make it sync correctly. So there's going to be a few teething problems with the videos over the next few videos, but I think in the long run, it's going to make them a lot better. So, oh, right, let's uh, get into this and see what uh, happens. Okay, attempt two on this uh, quest. We finished the last quest in like three turns or four turns or something with like a score of 70. <laughs> So hopefully this one will be a little more interesting. If you want to see the ridiculous other turn, I, I have got it recorded, I could upload it for you. But uh, for now it's just, it was literally over before it began. Okay, so a couple of things. Firstly, we kept our opening hand and the reason we kept it is because it has Steward in it, which is one of the most powerful cards. But it also has Faint, which is a really good safety card for enabling us to handle there's some quite nasty trolls in this one so let's just have a look at this quest now i talked about it a little in the introduction most likely which i record after the fact but basically we have all these cards are all the same they're all quest two and we're kind of lost inside more and we've got one of these cards as an exit and there's another card that's like a secret tunnel but it's a very dangerous secret tunnel you can lose i almost never use it and uh, we, we randomly shuffle these cards and keep drawing from them and you've got this discard mechanic where you put the quest underneath the bottom of the pile. So it's quite an interesting quest. It's very unique. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's do this. 1A. One, one you have discovered the fate of the Dwarven colony and seek to leave Moria, but exiting may not be as simple as entering. Prepare the quest deck and add the Nameless Fear to the staging area. That's this guy. I'll talk about him in a sec and remove all copies of Foe from Beyond from the encounter deck, then shuffle one copy per player back in. Okay. So over here, we've got the three copies that are no longer in the deck and we have one is already shuffled into there for us. So we're all set up, ready to go. Okay, 1B, a presence in the dark. Actually, before I do that, I'll talk about this guy. This is, the f nameless fear and he's not really a monster per se he's kind of like a omnipresent evil presence i guess anyway you'll note that he's got xxx for his threat attack and defense now x is equal to the amount of victory points in your victory display and there's lots of victory points in this game 
This guy can easily get up to like 17 threat, just this one card. And there's the foe from beyond, which we've shuffled in, which is extremely hardcore. When revealed, the last player deals damage equal to the Nameless Fear's attack to a hero he controls, cannot be canceled. And the Shadow does the same thing. So there's a high chance, well not a high chance, because there's only one card in a single player deck out of that whole deck, but there's still a, you know, this random game over kind of thing going on. Anyway, and this guy, he's immune to card effects and he can't be engaged or engaged. So he just sits up here for the whole, the whole game just being evil and nasty. So now let's read 1B, which says, As you leave the seventh level, the air grows thick and drums begin to roll from the deeps. A man-shaped shadow, yet greater, masses at the end of the hall and begins to head straight for you. When revealed, reveal one encounter card per player and add it to the staging area, then add a Prince of the Dark to the victory display. So, reveal, yonk. And it is a Undisturbed Bones. When revealed, each player must deal X damage to one ally he controls. X is the number of allies he controls. There are no allies, so that just gets discarded straight away. And then we add this to our victory display, which we'll put up here. Now, because we now have two victory points in the victory display, this guy is now worth two threats. And then we draw the top card from the quest deck. And I'll just read, these are all the same, so I won't read them every time. As the presence draws near, doubt and fear surround you like a vast shadow. You must find daylight. You must escape from the black pit. While search for the exit is the active quest card, only flip it aside 2B at the beginning of the staging step. And this is quite important, you'll see why there's all these different cards that'll like shuffle that, like a treachery cards that'll shuffle this back into this deck and draw a new one. But because that only flips over during the beginning of the staging step, you can't place tokens on it while it's in 2A. Okay, so we're ready to rumble. Uh, let's draw the next card, yoink. Okay, so we've got a swift strike. Okay, so we've got a pretty nice set of cards here. We're going to quest for two, three, four, and draw the next card, yonk. And it is a plundered armory, which is three in the staging area. So that's, we're questing for one, two, three, four, and there's three, four, five. Oh, wait, I forgot to do our starting threat and everything, didn't I? What do we turn zero and we're 11 plus nine plus seven is 27. Boom. But we go to 28 because it's five and we're questing for four. And then we'll just come down. Oh, and I always forget to do this. You're supposed to reveal this thing. Okay, heading up. Perhaps if you climb this pile of rocks, there would be a way up. Forced, if heading down is in the player's victory display at the end of any quest phase, shuffle heading down back into the quest deck. Basically, we want this one. We want heading up. The way I play is that I try and complete heading up but I bypass heading down. I'll show you that as we go. Yonk, and we travel there. Okay, so that was a little bit messy that first turn, but you know, it's uh, it's uh, still functioning. Okay, so boom, 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 boom. And we draw the next card, not from the encounter deck though. Yoing! And we have our Will of the West. This is an emergency card, just because this, because of the way this deck shuffles and just keeps shuffling, uh, you want to, they, sometimes these quests go for a long period of time and Will of the West just allows you to recycle your threat reduction, which is hugely important. Okay, so everyone gets two. And of course we're gonna spend two on Steward. Yunk to put out the steward of Gondor on Gloin. And that's it, nothing else to do. So let's quest for another four. Just gonna put that there like that. Quest for another four. Yunk. Bam, okay, this is a nasty one. This is the Orc Drummer. While the Orc Drummer is in the staging area, each enemy gets plus X 
threat, where X is the number of players in the game. So he's actually worth one, but because he's got plus X threat, he's actually two. And that makes this guy over here three. So once again, we're questing for four and there's five in the staging area. So our threat goes up by one to 30. Okay, now we're going to optionally engage this guy. Yoink! Like so. And this guy's got three defense, which is pretty harsh. Uh, I think we're not going to defend this at all. And just, well, maybe I will. No, I'm not going to defend this at all. Yoink! Okay. Shadow, attacking enemy gets plus X, where X is the number of players in the game. So that's plus one. So we get two wounds. And that, because he's Gloin, he goes to four health. And that's that. Now we untap. Untap. We draw a new card. Yoing. Nice, it's Bofa. Everyone gets a resource, so he goes to three. He goes to three, and he gets three. So he goes five, six, seven, bam. Now, it's time to start putting out some uh, funkiness. Uh, Thought I had, I don't know why I did that, took, took those wounds, ah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to spend five and place out Radagast. I'm going to stick down here because he's basically a hero. And I think that'll do me. And then I'm going to quest for four. Out comes the next card. Yonk. Okay. So this is a one threat. It's an X threat, actually. Where X is the number of players in the game. So it's one. So that's two, three, four. You get one guy. And once again, we're not going to defend this. Flip. It's another two. Now, we can't put two wounds on him, but we are going to put two wounds on Boromir, like so. And then we're attacking for three, four, five. Uh, three, four, beg your pardon. And that uh, kills this guy. Nice. And now we untap, and we untap, and we untap. And we, through that, we got to save our Swift Strike. Right, Swift Strike? Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> For a moment, I thought I put the wrong one in. Bam, bam. I think I keep forgetting to do that all the time. Okay, and we draw our next card. Bam, ah, there we go. Okay, so we get uh, one for you. You go to four. You go to three and you go to four. Is that right? Uh, no, you don't go to three. You go to you get three because you've got Stuart. So he goes to five. That makes more sense. So we're going to spend bam four and put out Faramir. We're going to spend four. Mm. Yeah, I don't think we are actually. We're going to spend three. No, we're not. I think we'll just do that. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. Oh, wait. That's right. We have uh, Radagast. I forgot. So we spend one from Radagast and three. No, we haven't got time yet. Okay, next turn. Basically, I want I want to keep 
this two resources on to keep swift strike up. So if I if I put out the bird, then unfortunately I won't be able to do that. But anyway, so let's quest for four. Five, six, flip. Each player must exhaust a character. Okay, so this is actually quite bad. This could be terrible. Now, usually when you exhaust a character, should have put this wound on Frodo. I don't know what I was thinking. Normally you exhaust Boromir and he's got five health and there's no five cost characters except for Radagast. So you're always safe. But instead, we've now got to exhaust a character. Now he's got three health remaining. He has three health, so we may as well exhaust him and hope we get a low card. Bam, one, beautiful. That means he doesn't die and this guy gets discarded. Basically, this one says, each player must exhaust a character and discard the top card of his deck if able. If the printed cost of the discarded card is equal to or higher than the remaining hit points of the exhausted character, discard that character. Okay. Anyway, so a two, four, six. We're lucked out then. <laughs> That's uh, two, three, four, five, six. This gets discarded. Now, it did, that did have a special ability, which allowed us to place out an armor, but we don't have one in our hand, unfortunately. Yoink. Okay, so untap, untap. Untap, untap. 32, three, and draw another card. Okay. This goes to five. This goes to four. This goes to two, and this goes to five. Okay. So now we spend two. And then we spend another two from here. And we put out our birdie. Remember, Radagast gets resources and you can use those resources to heal as well as uh, play eagles or, well, creatures, actually. And we're also going to spend three from here and take this down to two and place out both four. And the reason we waited so long to play both four is next turn, this is gonna become three. So if we draw a grab a greeting next turn, we can play it. We always wanna have two at the end of every turn. So the next turn it's three. So we can always play our greetings. But we got questing power coming up the Yazoo now. And I think we're actually going to only quest with these guys. So that's two four, six, eight. And I'm gonna leave the birdie up. Out comes the next card. And here's that card I was telling you about. When revealed, if the player are not on stage one, shuffle the current quest into the quest deck, then reveal a new quest card. So that's exactly what happens. Boom, this gets down here. And we shuffle this in. and the new one's car put out. Now the quest does actually say, then reveal a new quest card, but it's only revealing the 2A, okay? Not the other side. Okay, so we're questing for, there's two in the staging area and we're questing for eight, so there's nothing happening. So we're just gonna pass the turn. Oh, this gets, Discard it though. Okay, the game has already gone way longer than that last game. <laughs> okay, healer, finally, but uh, we still can't cast him. We're waiting for the another card to turn up. Okay, this guy goes to three. Oh, oh, that's my alarm clock reminding me that I've got a dentist appointment in a few hours, so I better hurry this up. Uh, he goes to seven. Five, six, seven. He goes to one, and he goes to four. Okay. 
Okay. We've actually got not a single card we can cast. So that's pretty bad. Once again, two, four, six, eight. We reveal this card. Okay, so this is that passageway I was telling you about, blocked by shadow. When revealed, the first player chooses one of the following. Each player discards one card from the top of the encounter deck. If the card is a treachery card, the discarding player is eliminated from the game. Now, we're not going to do that because it's mostly treacheries, but it's this is a pretty good card if you're really stuck and you just want the game to work. It's like a secret exit. See, once you complete this stage, and it's only nine points, you actually win the game. So it's a, a very, you know, if you've got... If you've scryed the encounter deck beforehand, you can get away with it in single player, but in multiplayer, someone's not gonna, some, one player is gonna be eliminated. So last resort kind of thing. Anyway, the second one is, reveals the next quest card, putting block by shadow on the bottom of the encounter deck, which is what we're gonna do. So new one comes out, and this one goes on the bottom. Okay, so once again, there's two in the staging area. We're questing for eight, so there's tons and tons and tons of room. So we're just gonna untap and go to the next turn. Shunk. And five, and the next card. Ah, greeting, nice. This goes to four. This goes to plus three. This goes to two. This goes to five. And then we're obviously gonna do the greeting. Takes this down to one. We drop our threat to 28. And we're still pulling pretty average cards. So again, two, four, six, eight. Oh wait, we've got to reveal this. Ah, awesome. Okay, so the game's almost over now. When revealed, each player chooses one questing character who controls. Each questing character not chosen does not count its will until the end of the turn. Okay, so. We're gonna pick uh, this guy, I guess. Bofer. So we're questing for two. Flip this guy over. Each card must exhaust a character and discard the top card of his deck. That's pretty annoying. We've already had one of these. We're gonna flip over the eagle. Oh no, and there's the belt we've been waiting for. Damn it. But two damage is not enough to kill that guy. So, questing for two, there's two in the staging area and nothing happens, but then we tap uh, Faramir, and we add one, two, three, four to the two. So, a couple of things happen. Firstly, we put four quest tokens, which actually completes this. But if we look at the other bit of text on it, it says, after placing the first token on narrow path, search the encounter deck and discard path for abandoned tools and add it to the staging area if able, which we do. And then we're gonna beat this. So this goes into our victory pile and it's worth one point. So this guy becomes a three. And then we just find this, uh, there it is, right down the bottom again. Okay. goes into the staging area. Now this card does say uh, add to the staging area, not reveal. So under the new rules, he does not get guarded, which is kind of crazy, but there you go. And there's a new card. We then tap Boromir and attach the tools to Boromir. Okay, so everyone untaps. And it's really upsetting that we didn't get to uh, 29. Didn't get that belt. Flip. 
Okay, beautiful. Right, so you go to two. We get another three on you. You go to three and you go to six. All right. Well, we're going to play out this guy and he's worth four. So that's one, two, three, four. And I think what we're going to do, his ability means you can draw a card and discard a card. We're going to discard, well, let's draw a card first and see what it is. Yonk. Oh, look at that. Navri's belt. And we're going to discard Will of the West for that. And then we're going to spend two and place out the belt. And then we're going to tap that belt. Now the belt is a very underused card in my opinion. Let's just have a look at it. Attached to a dwarf hero, exhaust the belt to give attached hero a resource icon of your choice until the end of the phase. Now it only goes for the phase, so you've got to be careful how you use it, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Basically we've tapped it and we're choosing lore. And we're gonna spend two to put out our healer. And then we're gonna spend, go, gonna tap him and heal one, heal one. Then we're gonna spend two resources to untap him and then tap him and heal both these guys. And then I'm gonna spend another two to untap him. Now, a quest for two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, what was this on? Who cares? Let's put it on three. Two, four, six, eight, ten. We reveal the next card. Ah, this is a wrong turn. I hate wrong turn. Wrong turn! This is a dangerous part of the mines. Reveal one encounter card per player and add it to the staging area. So we get to reveal one. And then we also need to reveal the normal one just from... Ooh! Deal one damage to each exhausted character. Two if it is a dark location. Well, that's fine. Like we untap this guy. So... You'll note that all my characters, all my allies, all have three or more health, by the way. So even if that hits for two, it never kills anyone. So this goes one, one, <laughs> and this goes to one, and this goes to two. Okay. Still, we have three, four in the staging area, and we're questing for two, four, six, eight, ten. So this is defeated. Now this is only one to pass. So this goes into our victory display, which ups our victory pile by two. So we're now at five threat. Okay, so this guy now comes down and attacks us. Um, we're gonna defend with this bird. Flip, nothing happens. Attacks for one, defends at two, no damage. We then attack for one, four, which kills him. I then tap my healer guy and I heal one. And I think I'll also heal one. And then I spend two to untap him. And then I tap him and I heal. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave it that way for now. Okay, so everybody untaps. Thirty.
27. Draw a card. You get one resource, you get three resources, you get one resource, and you get one resource. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tap you and place out uh, Haldir of Lord, whatever her name is, and that costs four. Like I didn't do that untapping thing because I couldn't do it because uh, my guy was or my uh, thing was already tapped. I knew something was going wrong. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to quest with two. game over there's the game over damn I should have tapped that and done the greetings oh well too late ah well that's that and this gets revealed oh five damage to a hero of our choice well we'll just do it to Frodo because we like doing it to Frodo puts our threat up by five And well, there's two, four, six, eight, ten. There's four, there's five in the staging area, so we've passed. And I'm going to tap you and take a wound off you too. And then during the refresh phase, we now have this extra function. Abandoned tools gains, refresh action, exhaust attached hero to put a progress token on escape from darkness. So, Boromir is not exhausted, so we tap him once and we get one progress token. We then spend three threat to go to 37. Uh, 38, what am I doing? I can't count. And that untaps him three times, and we tap him three times, and we put another three. Boom, that's game over. Bam! Fun quest, but uh, really trounced it both times I played for you. Sometimes it goes quite long if you can't find your cards quick enough. Uh, still, what a thrashing. Uh, if only, if I didn't play this card, and instead... I use those five credits to go to turn that into spirit and went three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could have cast two greetings using uh, tomb and dropped my threat by another 12, <laughs> which would have been taking me to 26. And then I would have had 70, 80, 96 points. Whatever. Uh, well, I'm not going to do a third one, but uh, I might do a third one like on the computer because uh, this is actually a really cool quest, but neither of the two games I've run have really been that interesting because I've thrashed them so hard. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.